Hello everybody and welcome back to FantasyFootballFix.com, the number one platform to help you build your overall team value, providing you with all the essential tools you need to improve your overall rank, which gives you the best chance of winning those all-important mini leagues and finishing the year with the highest rank you can possible. My name's Eddie or FBL Phillips. Today I'm bringing you the latest edition in my series, Eddie versus the Algorithm, where each week we take a look at the team the computer's predicted to score the most points for that specific game week, a free hit team if you like, and then I put together my own side to see if I can go up against it and score more points than the algorithm week in, week out. So without further ado, let's get into it and have a quick recap of how the algorithm got on over Gimme 23. And as with, I expect the majority of you people watching, the algorithm did not have a great 23 in a game week where the algorithm was in the real 30s. The algorithm did manage to come out with a score of 42, which wasn't perhaps too bad in the scheme of things. De Bruyne captaincy with eight points, taking his total to 16, and Tini's clean sheet and two bonus in a goalless draw against Burnley for Arsenal were the only two glimpses of light in a sea of darkness, really, or a sea of blanks, I should say, in game week 23 for the computer. Tennis up front was just the, the highlight of it, really. I didn't know about the double game week when this team was put together, so it's quite lucky, really, or maybe the captaincy would have been over on Dennis, to be honest. But the Royal captain came through, managed to put the captaincy on the highest scoring player in the team, which is not bad at all for the algorithm. So let's see, did I manage to beat the algorithm or not and make it 13-12 to myself, or was it 13-12 to the algorithm in this weekly series? And I'm actually very happy with how I did in Game Week 23 with the free hit team I selected. Ramsdale, Teeny, and Dean were the ones who really came through, especially the left back of Aston Villa. He managed to pick up a 12-point haul in his return to Goodison Park, where he picked up the assist for Emi Buendia's header, as well as a clean sheet and some lovely, nice bonus points to add to that as well. Speaking of bonus points, Ramsdale and Teeny both managed to pick up two apiece in Arsenal's 0-0 draw against Burnley, which meant that they both scored eight points with 16 collectively, a very nice total for those to going with the double Arsenal defence did in fact pay off. I also had the captaincy on Kevin De Bruyne, so another nice 16 points there. And despite Dennis going with him over King in the end, it was still a very respectable 59 points in a game week where the average really was so low. So not quite up to the predictions, but yeah, 59, I would definitely, definitely would have taken that in the game week and it would have been a big green arrow if you did decide to go with this team. Of course, it was really in FPL and respectively a good week to have a bad week. The difference between a good score and a bad score was only about 20 or so points at the most, you'd have to say. So really, when we take all things to an account, it wasn't a big deal either way. And playing a free hit was never really much of an option for those who were going into Game Week 23. With so many potential blanks and doubles on the horizon in the future, do remember that it will pay off in the long run, hopefully, your patience. So without further ado then, that makes the score 13 to 12 in my favour of me in the series. Let's get into and have a look at the algorithm team for Game Week 24. So let's have a look at the algorithm 11 for Game Week 24 with a predicted points total of 65 points, which is not bad at all. And goal is going to be Aaron Ramsdale, who after my pick last week does actually come into the computer side for the following game week. With Wolves away, a very, very nice fixture, you'd have to say, especially with Adamus Traore's absence now having left for Barcelona, meaning there's even less options available in terms of scoring for Wolverhampton Wanderers. And I'd say a very nice chance of a clean sheet for Arsenal and Ramsdale to provide another nice nice haul to his owners. I'd recommend probably starting Ramsdale over probably any other keeper in the game this week, myself as well. So I really do like that as a pick from the algorithm. In defense, it is going to be a back four. Trent Alexander-Arnold and Cancelo, as usual, are in. But then it's Laporte and Cresswell, who I do really like as picks. Laporte, more specifically, with Brentford at home, I think it's a very nice time to double up on that Manchester City defense, especially with Norwich up next, even if you're bringing in someone right now. Despite the lack of doubles, I think Manchester City defenders could be a great route to go for. For. If we didn't have double game weeks, everyone would be bringing in Laporte, especially with how great his attacking statistics have looked as of late. Cresswell is an interesting one, especially with Wolves, uh, West Ham defenders such as Soufal as uh, available too. Then maybe considering going for Kukal over Cresswell would be the way I would go. And a lot of people still hanging on to Craig Dawson. Maybe that's a hint to start him with Watford, probably looking to bolster their defence more than their attack and working on that aspect of their game in order to stay up under Roy Hodgson's new leadership. So that's a very nice chance of a clean sheet for West Ham this week and maybe the algorithm is taking that into account. In midfield it's going to be Jared Bowen, De Bruyne, 
Jota and Son. So a very, very stacked midfield in terms of options. Son, who is back in training and available for Spurs against a pretty weak Southampton side, you'd have to say is a very, very nice out there punt. I know a lot of people are considering looking to bring in the Korean back into their sides after he's been out with injury for a while. Kevin De Bruyne, as well as a standout premium midfielder pick this week, really, with the option to captain him looking very, very tempting indeed. And Jared Bowen, the other captaincy option, who does look stand out when we look at projected points from Fantasy Football Fix. He looks a nice captaincy option for those who are without the Belgian in their sides. Diogo Jota still retains his place despite Luis Diaz coming into the Liverpool side. And with Sat Mane set to be out for a bit, I think that Luis Diaz, his only competition, will be the one on the left-hand side. Mane will be back home celebrating the AFCON victory. I say the only way that Jota doesn't start is if he gets injured because he'll play through the middle, Luis Diaz will play to the left, and Salah, if he's back, will play to the right. The only competition to Jota's position will be for Mino, and that will be the only cause of a lack of minutes for him, in my opinion. But with Luis Diaz being a new signing, I don't see any risk of Jota really being hurt in terms of game time. And then up front, it is going to be front two of Antonio and Watkins. So a triple up on West Ham in the starting 11. And then Ollie Watkins, who faces Leeds, who are once again one of the weakest defences in the league so far this season. And an Aston Villa side, who have got some nice reinforcements in Coutinho, Luca Dean. They've also got Emi Buendia firing in form that he looks like he should have started with at the start of the season. And really, that's only a recipe for some more goals for Villa under Gerrard's new management. And yeah, I really do like the look of this side. The captaincy this week is going to be, unsurprisingly, on Kevin De Bruyne for the algorithm team, with Gerard Bowen taking the vice-captaincy. On the bench, it's going to be Dubravka, Ben White, Adam Eder, and also Jacob Ramsey. So some nice reinforcements there if we do have some unforeseen events that do come and take place. Ben White, a very nice cheap option, as is Adam Eder, only under 5 million, the Norwich forward with a Crystal Palace fixture that doesn't look too bad at all. And Jacob Ramsey, who does look one of the standout under 5 million midfielders, along with Anthony Alanga at the moment. So yeah, some reinforcements there if needed that don't look too shabby at all. I would even like a double Arsenal defence, really. There's quite a lot of good options at the back. But there's also some great options in midfield and up front this week. So deciding on formation for a free hit draft would be very, very hard to do indeed. So now it's my job to go away, have a look at this team, see what changes I would make to it, and then come back with That's My Bro's Draft to see whether you guys think that I can outscore the algorithm for the second game week in a row. So, as you can see, there's not really been a lot of changes to the algorithm side in terms of my squad. The defence really has stayed very, very similar, with Aaron Ramsdale keeping his place in goal, and three of the back four staying the exact same, but Aaron Cresswell being changed out for Andy Robertson, who I really do think has a better chance of an attacking return, and really a better chance of a clean sheet in game week 24. Despite what I mentioned about Roy Hodgson focusing more on the defensive aspect of Watford's game, in an attempt to keep up Watford in the Premier League, I really do think that Robertson and has a better chance of the clean sheet despite West Ham facing that Watford side who have looked very poor in attack and are going to be focusing more on keeping those clean sheets in a hope to stay up in the Premier League. Bowen, De Bruyne, Jota and Son all retain their places in midfield and the captaincy also stays exactly where it was on the Belgian for that home game against Brentford. I really do think it's just a, such a strong midfield. I can't think of anything to change. I was considering maybe putting in a Bruno, but really I think Man United have looked so disjointed as of late and so so out of form. I can't justify going for a Manchester United player, even in defence, really. I think that Ramsdale's a better pick than De Gea, and going to low, I don't think is as strong, anywhere near as strong as any of those options you can see in my back line. The other major change to this team is Antonio dropping out, so the lack of a West Ham double up in attack. Edouard is the one who comes in for him with the Crystal Palace number nine, registering a goal and two assists last time out in his game against Norwich at home. This time he faces Norwich away and some very nice fixtures after that as well. Even if you're looking at him long term, I think he could be a fantastic pick. And you'll know why if you've seen the wildcard draft video, which you can check out as well that I did earlier on in last week. Edward is only outscored in terms of expected FBL points by Harry Kane and Cristiano Ronaldo. So really, if you're looking for an option to go for with some good fixtures, a double game week in 26 and a low, low price point, I think Edward could be the man to go for, especially if Calvert-Lewin's injured and people are still holding on to him. An easy switch across to him would be a move that I'm lying up myself in terms of my team. Elsewhere on the bench, Foster comes in as the backup keeper and Tini is upgraded from White as well. That's only if you can afford it, of course. I don't see any of the subs getting onto 
the pitch either way. But Adam Eder and Jacob Ramsey are equally some very nice picks to have as backup if, lo and behold, some events do occur, which means games here are postponed or whatnot. So yeah, that's really going to be my team for this game week. Let me know whose team you think is going to score more points, the algorithm 11 or my 11 for this game week. I appreciate they are quite tight, as you can see from the predicted scores. 65 did the algorithm, 63 to me in terms of predictions. So yeah, let's see if I can come out on top and beat the algorithm for the second week running and make it 14 to 12 to me in the series then. If you are new around here, do remember to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video as well. You can leave it a thumbs up down below. It helps my content get out to a wider community and see more people and interact with them about FPL and whatnot. You could also turn on notifications if you want to be notified of when we do upload here over at Fix. And other than that, nothing more to say than thank you very much for watching. I wish you all the best of luck for Game Week 24 and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.